takes in Cinema 4D Release 17 is a system to save variations of your scene or to be more precise variations of variables in your scene into one single Cinema 4D file. The situation up until now, before Release 17, looked a bit like this. This is a quite extreme example, but what we at iXponsor here do is if we need more passes than the standard default multi-pass system of Cinema is offering is we save out copies of our Cinema 4D file with the passes that we need. In this quite extreme example it's amounting up to 56 passes that we saved, of course multiplying space that we need on our server and it's quite cumbersome to handle anyway because just imagine if the client wants a camera change you need to copy and paste the change camera into each and every one of these files save them out again render them again very very cumbersome to work with with this system with release 17 this is no more because we got takes the takes manager can be found in the tab right underneath the objects manager and this is what it looks like for the sake of this video i'm just going to put it right next to my viewport so we can always see what's going on with our takes and our objects without doing anything to it you get the main take which is just your scene in the state that it's currently in no changes at all and if you want to start using takes you add a new take and now if you select any of your objects you'll notice that the values you can usually animate are grayed out right now be that's because they are overwritten by your new take that you created because what a take is doing it's saving all the changes you do to any of the values just in that take not in your main scene but only in this take to get this really clear and the easiest way to have the take system save out the changes that you do is to hit this button here which is the auto take mode which is a bit like the auto key mode in keyframe animation it's just automatically saving anything that you change in your scene so for example if i want uh, um, everything that's in the null object stage to be hidden in this take i'm going to my stage object go to the basic functions here and set it visible in editor off and also visible in renderer off and now you see that the stage is hidden in this take if i switch my main take active it's there again because visible in editor and renderer is back at default that's what it was in the main take in my new take it switched off and this is also the easiest way to record takes by just having auto take switched on if i don't want to have auto take because maybe it's a bit confusing if i'm clicking around it might record things that i don't want to be recorded just switch that back off go to anything you want to record right click do a override and add another override here and now it's recording whatever is in here so either do an auto take or do manual overrides on your values all right that was our very first take let me just remove that so what can this system be used for you might ask well this is a scene from iXponsor's latest animation it's rendered with octane and well, if you don't have octane licenses on all your computers going on and you want your animators to be able to render out quick animatics with advanced renderer you could do that with the take system you add a take call it animatic and do an animatic version of your scene in that take you switch on auto take because it's the easiest way to do it first thing to do is you switch off your octane light for example and make sure your advanced render light is switched on another thing you might want to do is switch out the textures because that's all octane textures right now so maybe you want to go and select your cathedral material replace it with an advanced render cathedral material as auto take is switched on it's recognizing that i changed the material and it's recording the material change in my take here so i can do that for my other main materials too i go to her body replace the material with an advanced render version and do the same for her face and now if i 
switch takes, I can see that in my main take, my octane light is on, advanced render light is off. In my animatic take, it's just the other way around. And you can also see that here in the material section, in the animatic, I've got my AR advanced render material. And in the main take, I've got my octane material. So this is quite a nice way of switching complete render engines around. The only thing that we need to do right now is also change the render setting because in my render settings, it's still at octane renderer. So what I could do is I do a new render setting, call it advanced render, make sure it actually is advanced render, set a render resolution, which is low enough for my animatic. And it's as auto take is on, it's automatically assigning this new render setting to my animatic take indicated by the small render settings icon back here for every take there is you can change the render settings i could go back to my octane setting i could say i want the same render setting that my main take has or i go to my advanced render setting and therefore complete my animatic take now the animatic take is rendering advanced render my main take is my full production octane scene and by the way over here on the right side of the takes manager you can always see what is changed you can see that the texture changed from Octane to Advanced Render Materials. All the texture tags are listed here that are influenced by this take and also all the objects that are influenced by this take are listed here. So that would be one use case. You could uh, switch over shaders and complete render engines in one single Cinema 4D file. Another case where the take system comes in really handy does have nothing to do with rendering and that is when you are not really sure how things in your scene should behave and you just want to try out different things. For example, we've got the rising snails here. They are done by a cloner and just having some effectors moving the snails up. So if I'm not really sure if the amount of snails here is enough or if I need more or less, what I'd need to do is I tweak the count number in the cloner right here. but as I want to compare different things, I could do that changing of the count of the cloner, not in the main take, but add a take for every time I'm changing the count around. So I'm adding a new take, auto take is on, I'm changing the count of my snails and see if it looks better if there's more snails, not really sure. So I add another take, change the count back to a, a lower setting, maybe add another take, try some more snails uh, maybe that is too much maybe it looked better like this maybe it looked better like this or in the maybe the main take was the best one not really sure i need to do uh, some more variations but as you can see it's a very quick way of changing values around trying out different things not saving everything in separate cinema for defaults but having everything in one cinema for default saved in the take instead of separate cinema for defaults, perfect way of just trying different things out really quickly and being able to compare the state of your particle system, of your cloner setup to other states that you did before. Very nice way of working. A small tip for streamlining your workflow that takes even more. If you want to have many objects affected and not just a few, you can use something called groups in a take you start by adding a new take and then this icon here gives you a new group in your take where you can basically collect objects and have them all do the same thing so if i want to make a take where only the background is visible i'd need to hide the character i'd need to hide the snails so i'll take the character object put it in my group i take the rising snails put it in my group and maybe I also want to hide the light setup so I take my light setup put it in the group and what a group does is you can either add tags to a group back here and have this group override all the textures that are in there override all compositing tags are in there display tags hair materials whatever you can find here or you can have the uh, or you can use the visibility traffic light, the same thing that is available in your objects manager. You can switch the visibility of the whole group off 
or you can switch the visibility on. Gray means it's taking the visibility from the objects manager's visibility traffic light. It is indicated here by a grayed out traffic light. This is indicating that the take system is taking over. These objects are part of the group and the group is hidden. As always, name your objects so you can find things again and this take would be background only very quick way of setting up render takes in the main system everything is there because it doesn't have the group in the background only the hidden group is hidden by the traffic light and all the objects that are part of the group are therefore hidden in the rendering and in the editor all right so we created quite some takes and now we want to render them what we could do is we could use this button here to render all takes to picture viewer or we could team render all takes to picture viewer or we could mark the takes that we want to be rendered and then just render the mark takes to picture viewer or team render the selected takes to picture viewer. What's also supported is command line rendering. So if you are using any of the available render farm managers like Royal Render or Deadline or any of the others, that is supported via command line as well. One problem that comes up when rendering takes is what's the file name? of the renders going to be when you're rendering those three takes, for example. To tackle this problem, there's a new system introduced in the render settings. If you fire up the render settings and go to your save path, you'll notice that new little arrow icon back here, and that reveals a whole world of wonders, something that hasn't been there in cinema before. You can use variables in your file names. So for example, if you want to save out your takes, you name your scene like feature video underscore. And now you want to add the name of your take. So you click the arrow button and go to current take name. Maybe do another underscore. Go to the presets here. Look for current frame, which is just the current frame number. If you're rendering animations, then do a dot do JPEG because it's the format JPEG right now that's added automatically as well, but I'd like to put it in. And this is just so great because now you don't have to care about your file naming for renderings anymore. It's all done automatically by Cinema 4D and it's even supporting the creation of new folders. If you do it like this, you do a backslash, then get your current take name, do another backslash, get your feature video file name going and then do the frame number. That would work as well. Now Cinema is creating a folder with the name of the take and then saving the renderings of this take into this folder all automatically. You don't need to worry about anything. Really, really great. The take system was also built with bigger productions in mind. So just imagine you're the guy prepping this shot you start out with an empty cathedral, there's nothing in there yet. And one of your teammates was doing the character and he was setting up a take for the character doing an RGB mat that you want to bring in your final production shot, obviously. So you can do that by doing a file merge and you bring in Denise, which is the character for this shot. You hit open and Cinema is asking you, do you want to reassign included takes and boy yes i want to do that because here's my destination the cathedral scene i'm working on no takes yet and here's the source the denise the character file with the rgb mask take that was set up by the character artist so to bring that in you simply drag and drop it over to your destination file hit ok and here it is denise is loaded in she's sitting right here in your shot and the rgb mask for her came along if you activate it you can see that the RGB mask is still working on Denise. If you go back to the main take, you can see Denise in her beauty shading. So that's how to bring in takes that other people and are create, uh, have created in other files to get takes working in bigger production systems and workflows. And believe it or not, there's even more to the new take system. Let's switch file for this. We go to this one, which is sort of a fake file. The seashells crown was baked to a normal and diffuse map for wider shots. So it's sitting on a pretty low poly mesh and everything just comes out of textures. 
And this shot can be used pretty nicely to demonstrate one new feature, which is material overrides. It's pretty common during the lighting process especially to override every material there is in your scene with one clay-like flat gray material so you can see the what the light is doing in your shot and you're not distracted by any fancy reflections and also get the render times a bit quicker. So to do that is you switch on material overrides, you create yourself a standard material that you can drag and drop in here and now if you render you'll see that all the materials are overwritten with your standard material which works okay everywhere except on that fake baked to normal and diffuse and alpha maps crown because that material is overwritten as well but we need some components of this material for it to look right and for this to work there's that preserve group that you can open up and here you can see that Everything in your materials should be overwritten except our normal map that we need and except our alpha map that we need. And now if we render again, we can see that all values are overwritten with your gray, grayish white material except the normal map and except the alpha map of the crown. So that is a pretty cool feature as well. Not just a stupid brute force override of everything but a more intelligent override which gives you possibilities to exclude several channels from being overwritten. So that's it for an overview of the core functionality of the take system, a very powerful system and there is more to it. For example, you can do filters and searches in your takes. It's fully accessible by Expresso. You get one new takes node for Expresso. So really it is a powerful system that should improve your workflow quite a bit.